Uh, the light is coming down like this and it's illuminating the ball mostly on this side. This kind of soft light right here, transition from light to dark is called a form shadow, okay? Uh, and then you have shadow here, four shadows where it's darkest. There's a little bit of reflected light underneath here at the bottom. That's uh, the light is coming down, hitting the paper and then bouncing up and hitting the sphere a little bit. So reflected light. And then this right here, this circle behind it, cast shadow. It means that uh, this object here is, is in front of the light, it's casting an image of, it, of itself, except in reverse onto a flat surface. So I have a, I have the sphere from the outline of it. Um, I have some background tone, just kind of emphasize it, my perspective. Uh, here's some more here. And we have the, the table surface. All right, so if I'm trying to um, get the angle right for the table, I have it off a little bit, it should be like this. I can take my, um, my drawing object, turn it like this, so it mirrors the edge of this tabletop, and then bring it over to here, and I see that I need to have this sharper angle. Uh, this back of the table is horizontal. Uh, this one right here is parallel with it. So then we have the edge of the form shadow. Um, I find it's really easy for me or easier for me to render a shadow if I can approximate where the shadow is the transition from light to dark. It's like right here. So I have a um, slightly different view than the camera, just so I'm, I'm drawing what I'm seeing in person, not necessarily what the camera is seeing. It's like that. And I can fill that in. And I may blend it. And I soften it. And does anyone know why I soften this transition here? Anybody? Okay, this is what's known as a form shadow, okay? And a form shadow, the light is striking the ball direct on here, but there's less and less light until we get to this part right here, and it's gradual. Less and less light hits here until at this part, there's here there's no light at all from the, the light source hitting it. It's slightly lit because there's reflect there's ambient light around us okay so underneath we have our cast shadow it's moved a little bit since started the setup it looks like from my perspective the cast shadow is a little bit darker than the form shadow of the ball fill it up now, I could enhance the illusion a little bit by uh, if I had those lines going this way. So, um, can somebody postulate, guess, what one of the 
differences in how you draw and how it looks a form shadow from a cast shadow along the edges. Anybody? What's the difference between the edge of this shadow and the edge of this shadow? I'm sorry? Exactly. It's a, a cast shadow has a crisp outline. See how that's crisp? And I can go like this and really emphasize it. That, um, it's actually, there's more right there. Um, a cast shadow is crisp because it's formed because, uh, by this round object completely obstructing the light. Um, and so you get the outline of it. Whereas this one, the transit, the amount of light that's hitting the object is gradual. Okay. So we have the, so we have light, we have the form shadow, we have the core shadow, we have a cast shadow. Uh, what's another variation uh, Iris was bringing it up that we may see? A variation in the tone in the shadow. Reflected light. So if you look over here underneath the ball or the sphere, the light is coming down here, bouncing up. And so it's illuminating a little bit under here. Now, something that people tend to get wrong is uh, the way we the way we see things is we, um, if we're looking at something in the shadow, we it, the shadow lightens up our perspective of it because we have really good um, um, a really good ability to detect very slight variations of value. But we over. We're not very good at um, detecting absolute values. So we may look at this and think that it's lighter than it is, but I, we're gonna go ahead and lighten it up a little bit. And the for an object that's one tone, something to remember is the reflected light is always darker than the light. <laughs> even though, because it's still in the shadow. All right, now we have a little bit of extra darkness here. I'll call it an accent. And that's because um, this part of the cast shadow, it's, it's not getting the direct light, but it's getting a little bit of ambient light that's coming through. And um, so it's a little bit lighter here, but underneath the object, there's no light at all or hardly any light at all. So that's a lot darker. All right, so I um, I have a little bit of tone on, even the white of the sphere is not fully white. I pulled a little bit of vine charcoal and this is one of the things that's really good about fine. So I'm about to do something. Uh, so we so this portion right here is all in the light, but there's a highlight. So there's a portion that the light's coming down. It's for I'll do it over here, coming down. It's reflecting right here and into my eye, just like a little section right here and I can pull it out with my needed eraser. Now see how that really made the object look rounder than it was before. All right, let's do a couple more variations. Um, you notice when I drew this originally, I had a strong outline. So outlines are cool for um, showing 
um, showing form and for having a abstract feeling of, um, of the outline. Okay, it's I can see what what that is. However, in real life, things don't have outlines generally. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find where on this particular if does somebody have a chamois that I can borrow real quick? That's okay. So my needed eraser is going to pull up too much light for this, but I'm going to drop up in my image. See how there's like a little bit of light in the background behind here? I can kind of go like that. And then there's a section right here where the tone in the background and the tone of the sphere is actually the, the same. And if you see it on the sphere right here. And if I, let's see, we have this part comes here. And it kind of comes up to here. And then we kind of lose it. And that's this section right here is called a lost edge. And if we find areas that have lost edges, it mimics how we see the world because we don't we, we have to, uh, when we look at things with stereoscopic vision, there's a blurring around round objects. And, and if we have areas of, of lost edges, it kind of uh, makes it, makes the viewer have, interact a little bit with, with what it is we're, we're doing. All right, so let's see. We can, here and I can vary the tone a little bit to accentuate. So if I have a variety of um, tonal contrasts, uh, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay. Let's see, is there any portion right here where it kind of, yeah, we have kind of a little lost edge right here as well. All right. So, what I would like you guys to, does anybody have any questions about this? Let's let's write down this terminology. We have highlight. And that's this thing right here. Um, we have light, and that's this area right here. We have right here is midtone, and that's actually the the color of the object. Usually, we have our form shadow. Right there. Um, usually, this section over here is a little bit darker. And we'll call this let's get a little bit more tone there. Um, soften it slightly. Or shadow. Um, under here, it'd be very, soft. maybe I'll use this. Yeah, this is better. So I think the paper towel is a little bit better for pulling up reflected light. Um, 
reflected light. Um, and we have cast shadow. Right there. All right. I think we have all the terminology there. Um, oh, usually the cast, especially in, a, in an area like here, it's a little bit crisper, um, close to the where the uh, where the shadow is being cast, and it diffuses a little bit towards the edges. That's because we may have two light sources and and so it kind of diffuses a bit. 